Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you are just joining, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to listen to me today. I really appreciate it. My name is Georgina, otherwise known as Gina Cetera. Please remember to hit the subscribe button below because I would really appreciate you doing that. So today I'm gonna continue with my MCAT series. More specifically, I'm going to share with you guys how I studied for the psychology and sociology section of the MCAT, which is also the last of the four sections that I spoke about in my previous video. I'm going to share with you how I studied, my, my actual score, how this varied from my practice scores, um, the resources I used, and some do's and don'ts when taking the MCAT. So let's get into it. A little background about um, my knowledge moving into the whole MCAT studying thing. So I've only taken one sociology class in my undergrad um, journey. And it was an introductory sociology class and surprisingly, I really enjoyed it. I think my professor was exceptional because we learned a lot about what was going on in the community itself, you know, and how that had an impact on people. And then I took two psychology classes. The first one was an introductory psychology class and it was a summer class. It was really accelerated about six to seven weeks long. And I didn't remember a lot <laughs> from that. And I also took an abnormal psychology class, which I really enjoyed. But when I started studying for the MCAT in January, I realized that I did not know a lot of these terms. Like 95% of these terminologies I have never heard or I did not remember. So I started studying for the psychology section by watching all the Khan Academy videos. I'm going to put the link below where you can get them. Um, they're currently free at the moment and you can watch them as many times as you want. So for the first two to three months, so January to March, I watched all the psychology and sociology videos on the website. And I think it was really good at introducing all these new terms, especially for people who didn't major into psychology or sociology. And what I did was to take my own notes as I watched the videos, because as I said, there were so many new buzzwords that I've never heard of in my life. And so after I watched the videos and I took my notes, I came on YouTube and I searched the words specifically and I found like supplemental information that would explain them more for me. So after I watched those videos, the next thing I did was to start doing practice questions. Again, Khan Academy has a lot of free practice questions, which I'm going to put in the link below as well. So I started doing practice questions and I realized that watching the videos weren't enough for me to really understand what the questions were asking. So that's when I purchased the AAMC bundle. To be honest, they don't really have a lot of psychology and sociology questions, but I do think the questions they present to us um, does help in some way. Like they were very similar to the questions that I got on my actual exam. So I purchased the bundle and I went through all the psychology, sociology questions. And then I realized I am missing something because when I was looking at my practice scores, by the way, I took like 10 exams before the actual exam. Um, when I was looking at my practice scores, I realized my score wasn't improving. So my lowest practice exam was a 121 and it went up to like a 125 and it was just steady. And I was like, okay, I am missing something. Um, what else can I do? And that's when I was introduced to Anki or Anki or whatever, however people pronounce it, A-N-K-I. Um, and specifically, I started using the Miles Down Anki deck. I started using that the end of May to early June. And I was like, bingo, this is what I was missing because I realized that the psychology section is so much like memorization. 
um, a lot of buzzwords. They're very similar. They sound similar, but you have to know the differences. So between the end of May to my exam, I did straight Anki. Like every single day, I practiced at least 20 new um, psychology words. And I also revisited the ones from the day before. And I'm telling you, when I started doing that, my scores went up to like 128, 127. 128 was my highest on my practice exam. And more specifically, within the last two weeks of my exam, I did a lot of psychology Anki. Um, the specific deck is the, behav the behavioral science deck on the milestone Anki. That one really helped to improve my score. And another thing I did leading up to my exam was, so for most of the subjects, I used the Kaplan series. I did not use the Kaplan book for psychology. I wanted to, I tried to, but when I started reading it, I got very depressed. <laughs> like it's really thick. And I was like, there is no way on earth I'm gonna go through all this in such a short time, knowing that I have other subjects I need to relearn from scratch. So I did not read through the whole um, Kaplan psychology book. So I can't tell you if it was good or not. But I found this study sheet really helpful. Um, leading up to my exam, like a week before, I made sure to read the quick sheets every day. Um, it has a lot of information and it's very condensed, concise. And I was like, okay, this is really going to help me to solidify all the information I need for the psychology um, section for the exam. So that's what I did, basically. Um, that's how I studied for it. And I, there were so many things that um, I realized I didn't know. And another way that I helped myself to solidify the information was to relate to what was going on around me. So <laughs> there were so many buzzwords that I learned in such a short time. And then I started realizing that when I watch the television or when I'm out with my friends or my fiance, I would see them playing out in real life. So like group polarization, social facilitation, you know, all those words that I never heard of before. So like we'll be just watching a movie and I see something. I'm like, wait. That's that that means that in psychology that means that and, oh yeah it got really annoying but that was just a way for me to solidify the information um for myself so I did all that and I went into the exam and I got a 130 on my actual exam I was actually shocked because if you remember what I just said a few minutes ago my highest practice score was a 128 and I ended up leaving the exam with a 130. So one of the don'ts that I would recommend not doing, the psychology section is the last section of the MCAT. So you're gonna be tired, you're gonna be exhausted. For someone like me who has anxiety issues, I realized that there was a pattern. So after I took the first three sections, once I reached the the psychology sociology section when I reach halfway through I would get so freaking anxious and I would zone out for like a good couple minutes because I, I just wanted the exam to be over and because of that I realized that leading up the first half of my exam my practice exam my scores will be good I will be getting a lot of them correct and then for the latter half of my exam, that's when I started getting a lot of them wrong. And it wasn't until I sat down and think about why, why is this happening, I realized that I would zone out towards the latter part of my exam. Because one, I was so anxious, I wanted it to be over with. Two, I was so freaking exhausted, it's eight hours long, and I wanted it to be over with. Um, so that's one thing I realized leading up to my exam. And while I was taking my exam, I was actively conscious about it. I remember specifically doing the last section. And halfway through, I started to drift. And I said, Georgina, you better get your crap together <laughs> because I'm not retaking this stupid test. But 
I was able to see where I was going wrong with the psychology section and I was able to held it together and said, listen, you only have this minutes left. You can't afford to throw away your exam when you have all the time to relax after this exam. So that's one of the don'ts. Um, don't, you're going to feel exhausted, but you have to push through it because that will make or break your score on exam day. Tell yourself that this is the last time you want to take that exam and you're going to give it your best shot. Um, another don't is people say the psychology section is easy. I don't like to say things are easy because it depends on who you are, what you love, how you study, etc. So some people may say it's easy and they don't think they need to study. Please take that out of your mind ASAP. The psychology section is a lot of definition, a lot of memorization, and a lot of the questions ask about interpretation of data. You need to get those hands down if you want to ace the psychology sociology section of it. If you also look at the different percentiles, it's the hardest section to get a specific percentile. So for example, if you get like three wrong in this section, it's not weighted the same as if you get three wrong in the car section. You actually get a lower score, something like that in the psychology sociology section. So please take that myth out of your mind that you don't need to study for the psychology sociology section because you need to unless you are probably a, a major in it where you know all those bu buzzwords. Someone like me who did not, I had to really sit down and study them. Um, so that's a second um, myth that I would like to debunk real quick. And um, that's basically it for the psychology, sociology section. Um, know how to interpret data. It's not like hardcore data like the biology, biochem sections. It's not like those type of weird graphs but they tend to give you like these two studies and this did this, this did that. And they ask you to analyze, you know, what happened in one study, what happened in the other study, like what's the independent variable, dependent variable and all that jazz. So this is my two cents on how I studied for the psychology and sociology section of the MCAT. If this was helpful, please let me know below. If you have already taken the MCAT, feel f please feel free to drop your suggestions below because the aim of this video is to share with people who haven't taken the MCAT or retaken the MCAT how they can improve on their score. So yeah, I did talk a lot, but I hope you learned something <laughs> from what I talk about today. And please, uh, like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Share this with your friends because I would really appreciate it. And up next, I'm going to talk about the other areas of the MCAT and how I studied. So please follow me and I'm going to be posting the other sections shortly. So thank you guys for listening. I really appreciate you giving me your time and I hope you have a good day. Bye.